In this video, I'm going to show you how to make an auxiliary view with orthographic projection. Now we use auxiliary views when we have an inclined surface that's not perpendicular to any of the principal projection planes, so front, right, top, etc. We only really need the auxiliary view if there's features on the inclined surface that we need to dimension. So a chamfer, you know, typically doesn't have features on it, doesn't need its own auxiliary view. So let me jump right over here to the paper. Here's an example. I've got a pictorial view of a block with a hole in it. And then we've got the front view of the block with a hole in it. So looking at it this way. Now, we've got hidden lines showing where the hole goes. The first thing I'm going to do is show you what the right view would look like. So let's get started with that. I'm going to project some lines over and I'll probably fast forward through some of this because I did it in a previous video. So what we've got here are the visible lines of the part. So what we've got here are the visible lines of the right view and I project it over where the hidden lines should show up. So what I want to show you here is I got to take my piece of paper and I'm going to make a tick mark right here. Right? So this is the diameter of the circle in the front view. Okay, So the size that a circle actually is. If I bring it over here and twist it, you notice that the two lines I projected over are smaller than that circle, right? So when we project, this circle gets distorted. Now, we could take this a little further, so I'm just going to visually find the, the middle of the part. The circle is going to be the correct size from left to right, but it's not going to be the correct size up and down because of projection. Now, this would be an ellipse shape. Right, I can't draw an ellipse very well, but it would look something like this. Right. So the big thing is that it's not true size and shape, and these should be visible lines, or this should be a visible line. Okay. So we wouldn't want to dimension that hole or the location of it in that right view or the top view. Now, let's go to make our auxiliary view. How do we do it? The first thing we'll do is draw a line that's parallel to this line up here somewhere. Okay, So I want to make sure I clear the view I already have. Okay, So this line should be parallel to the inclined surface. Now I'm going to draw lines that are perpendicular to the inclined surface or perpendicular to this reference line means the same thing. And these are going to be my projectors. These are going to show me where the visible lines and the auxiliary view should show up. Right. So the next thing I'll do to get the depth, I'm just going to measure on my right view, make a tick mark, and then bring it up here. Okay. So I'll make a tick mark here. I can make a tick mark here, and then I'll just connect them, and that will be the far side of the part. So let me go through and make these lines visible. So those are the visible lines of our auxiliary view. Now the circle is even easier. I'll project the center line out as best I can. Right. And now I just want to find the center of the part. And I could use a protractor to get a nice circle in here. So I'll try to aim for the middle and draw a circle. Because it will be a circle because it's projected in an auxiliary view. Now the last little thing, this corner right here actually will show up as a visible line in the auxiliary view. It'll show up as a, a hidden line. Right. Normally, 
that's going to be omitted in an auxiliary view. It's just extra information that's not necessary. But a CAD program might put it in there automatically. So that's where it comes from in a, in a part like this. Okay. So the next thing with auxiliary views is often this surface and this surface are omitted with a partial auxiliary view, which just means that you put a squiggly line right here and just not have those surfaces. You want the edge so you can dimension the location of the circle. The surfaces themselves are foreshortened, right? They're not true size and shape, so we can't you know, do much with them in this auxiliary view. Now, if you wonder what it looks like in a CAD program, it looks just like this. So here's our right view. CAD can draw a great ellipse, much better than me. So, you know, can't dimension that view. And then it draws our auxiliary view, much better than I did, of course, and puts this hidden line here that comes from this corner, okay? So that's where auxiliary views fr come from. The last thing I'll mention is the auxiliary view has to be in projection unless you do a removed view. Right? So if you put a viewing plane AA, then this view could go anywhere on the drawing. So sometimes you run out of room for an auxiliary view. That's an option, and it's super easy in a CAD program to do that. But you have to have the viewing plane to let the reader know where it came from. Okay? So that's it for this video. Just a quick talk about auxiliary views and how to make one and, you know, kind of what they look like on a CAD program as well and how to manipulate them. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Check out the channel for more uh, drafting GD&T type content coming soon.